I think that we all eventually is going to be displaced. Let me show you. Let me show you. I'll give you an example, right? So I talked a little bit about this in, um, on the live stream yesterday in Quick Hits. But as I started deep diving and I wanted to go and see all of the videos and stuff like that, what you seeing right now that's showing on your screen is animations. It's going to be regular videos. But 100% of it is artificial intelligence. When they saying this is the goal, this video right here, what you're seeing right now is artificial intelligence. That's not real. This is not real. These dogs, these puppies that's showing on your screen right now with the snow over their face and they paws doing like this, that's not real. What, what you're seeing right now, the river and the birds and all of this stuff, this is Sora. And Sora is the latest version that is going to be released. Every single video that you see coming across your screen right now is the latest video. These are not animations. These are not animators. This is not real video. When you see this drone footage right here and these water that's crashing against the rocks, this is text to video. Meaning, when we seen OpenAI, OpenAI is the company that was largely invested into. This right here, this man, nothing you see right here is real. Zero, zilch, nada, nothing. Nothing. You see the definition in their face? You see all of the little videos and the nuances and everything that's on there? Do you see this? OpenAI is the company that largely introduced ChatGBT, okay? ChatGBT was also, or OpenAI, was the company that Microsoft heavily invested in, and it basically set off the, the AI, OpenAI wars. It set off artificial intelligence wars where everything is now, you know, you can do an interview, you don't know if you're talking to none of that, you don't know what's going on, right? And so the reason that I'm, I'm, I'm communicating this to you guys is because not only is this text to video, this is no longer you just putting in a prompt to understand. Let me take this uh, other Rolex off. No longer are you putting in a prompt to try to understand um, soft or homework or anything like that. You're basically saying, hey, create me a video with a cat, an animation with a fire, so that my cat can put his hand over it or create me a video of a drone shot or create me some video where there's a van going through the mountains with a bunch of greenery that's driving over the sand and then it's creating a video instantly for you guys to be able to use. The level of disruption that is coming in the industry is going to be unprecedented. The level of disruption in the industry is going to be unprecedented. Of all the things that I've seen in my lifetime, of everything that I've been able to, to, to pay attention to and anticipate and then to move around and all of this stuff, this will be the biggest disruption that you will ever see in your life. That's not even fucking, that's not real. This cat playing with a woman in her face in the bed is not real. These woolly mammoth right here that's walking around this was created in less than a minute. Text to video. Do you see how fast this moving? And then true to myself says, well, I know that it's fake. Well, first of all, at the natural eye, you're not going to be able to know that it's fake. When you see this type of stuff, you're not going to know what it's fake. You're not going to be able to tell the difference. You're knowing that it's fake because you know that I'm showing you something that's fake. And so you're looking for the fakeness in it. But this is real. This is so real, is realer than real. And so my point that I'm telling you, my point that I'm telling you is that not only is the film industry going to be disrupted, not only is, is stock footage and photo sites that's going to be disrupted, not only is content creators going to be disrupted, but you at your job, they're thinking of every in which way in which they can leverage artificial intelligence in order to disrupt every single industry. It's not a real black man right there. Can you think of the deep fakes 
the possibilities of how they would use artificial intelligence in order to mimic or show something or a presidential candidate or to create false advertisements or to influence what's going on in your elections as though they already have not, as though it's not already not that easy to be able to do. Can you think of the possibilities of Amazon is already, Amazon is already the film companies, commercials, advertisements, influencers. Do you know that there's already an artificial intelligence influencer that men are following online that they know is basically a robot and they're giving money over into this artificial intelligence influencer already? And they're following it. And it has a huge following on Instagram. Can you think of the possibilities of farms, of content farms for OnlyFans and stuff like that? Listen, bro, listen. <sighs> Appreciate what you have right now. Appreciate the fact that we have each other and to know that right now in the present is nothing but the present. And when I say the present, I'm saying the present, meaning that it's a gift to us right now. We have already started to become gods. We have already been playing God. And now you're going to see it more and accelerated than ever. And so think about the ways in which you're going to be disrupted. Everything that I do today is to plan for not only embracing and, and profiting from the disruption, but also to anticipate my own retirement at some point. Everything that I do, I take a multi-level approach. It's a three-level approach. My first approach is, what do I need in order to make sure that I survive right now? Second level approach is, what am I doing in order to ensure that I'll be able to thrive in my future? That could be a hobby. That could be professional. That could be you, you, you continuing to go to school. You get new skill sets, whatever businesses that you're creating in order to ensure that um, you're going to thrive five years from now. And then the, the, the final step, the third level is, what am I doing in order to ensure that I'll be able to live the lifestyle that I want to live for the rest of my life. And that's what real estate is for. That's all of that. Because regardless of what you think, the one industry that people will always need is housing. They will always need a place to stay. And even that is being disrupted because institutional investors are now taking over real estate. And it's almost like the final frontier in order to remove the middle class from being middle class. Institutional investors, large conglomerates and companies, are basically buying up every piece of real estate that they can get their hands on. They cannot buy enough because the land that we put our feet on is finite. They're not making any more. God ain't, God ain't making no more land for you to continue to buy. And so I deploy my resources into the things that's ultimately going to ensure that my daughter is going to be taken care of for the rest of her life. And we have to start being proactive. We cannot continue to wait for industries to disrupt what's going on with us and then to think that that's going to be OK. Your food is is genetically modified. Real estate is being taken over by institutional investors and the government not doing nothing about it inflation is out of control. I'm going to present to you a story today where they're basically telling you that they're proposing $50 an hour for minimum wage. Content creation, completely disrupted. Basketball players is going broke. Everything that you see today, five, ten years from now, is going to be completely different. It's going to be completely different. Have y'all ever seen the movie Ready Player One? Don't worry, we're going to get there. All I'm saying is, if y'all not in stock club, which we're going to do tomorrow, if y'all not invested in this stuff, if you're not a shareholder and benefiting from it at the very least, if you're not at the very least getting a dividend payment or figuring out how it is that you can invest in it so that you, you don't get behind as a result of it. You know, I remember when Andrew Yang, a lot of people don't remember, Andrew Yang ran for president. And I think that a lot of what he was standing on was flawed, but there was a lot of things that he predicted and he said was going to happen, and I 100% agree with him. And Andrew Yang said, listen, these major tech companies, they're going to be, the level of disruption that's coming for the American people is going to be insane. Now, we didn't know that that level of disruption was also going to come along with, and remember, everything you're seeing on the screen right now is not real. 
He said all of the disruption that's going to come from a technology perspective is going to completely change the way that we live and look at life. He said, look, I don't, he was proposing like some, some technology tax and all of this other type of stuff. But the reality is this, let's stop this for a minute. He was right. He was absolutely right. And he was actually ahead of his time because the American people were so distracted by what was going on with George Floyd and abortion rights and all of this stuff that they couldn't see past their nose. And they didn't realize that the policies that he was introducing, regardless of what side of the aisle he was on, because he was running as a Democrat, was actually an actual reflection of what our future was to become. And he predicted it. He said it. He said it. Every discussion that we have today, and it's okay to show the news and to report on what's currently happening. Every discussion that we have going forward, 95% of the discussion that we have inside of the Patreon and Stock Club, everything that I've been saying, I always say that I'm telling you guys what I'm thinking from a 10 and 15 year view. That's the only thing that matters. If you're not looking at what is going to happen 10 to 15 years from now, if you think you can save your way to wealth, if you are not actually participating from an investment perspective and planning your life, planning your children's lives, when you have children, when you decide to get married, and I say it all the time, it's in everything I say, vet for the thing that you are to become, not for where you currently are. When you have children, if you're not planning based off of the possibilities of you being able to put them in the best position possible long term and you just having kids for the sake of having kids, you're nothing but a slave. You're a modern day slave. If this does not give you a level of healthy fear to propel you to do the thing that's in the best interest of yourself and the people that surround you, you are not a, you're not you're not smart about how you going about doing things. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Somebody name sniff says, what does a job re resume look like nowadays? I'm on it. I'm on it. When I've gotten recruited to do some of the biggest jobs that I've ever done in my entire life, it was because they discovered me here. When somebody applies, and I don't even give a fuck about a resume. A resume is just a way for you to get yourself in the door. When somebody applies, the first thing that I go to do is I find out what it is that they're doing on social media. You have no choice but to have a social media presence now. If you don't have a social media, I'm starting to question whether or not you are who you say you are. I'm being 100% real with you. Listen, everything is your resume is what I'm telling you. What you do online, what you do on social media, the videos that you make, how you present yourself, every single thing that you do is your resume. Every single thing that you do is your resume. I'm going to say this final point and then we're going to get over to the rest of the show. When I was coming up in Detroit, automotive capital of the United States of America, of America, big three, our goal and the way that we thought that we was going to get to a bag as a kid was how we seen our parents. And we all just wanted to get into Ford Chrysler and GM. In less than 10 to 15 years, that dream was dead. In less than 10 to 15 years, we had be, been completely disrupted. The 2008 recession housing crisis had hit. The idea of even being able to make what you was making as an employee or a person that was getting hired in as a temp, hoping to get transitioned over into becoming a full-time employee was crazy. Now you have fast food workers almost making as much, if not more, than the people that are making your vehicles. It got disrupted so fucking fast that I was already pivoting and I was thinking to myself, nah, I got to become a software engineer because this ain't going to work. Ain't no way in hell, especially considering all of the different layoffs that I had seen had happened uh, throughout my lifetime leading up to the 2008 recession. And they were saying that them jobs was never coming back. Ain't no way in hell I thought that I was going I was gonna to be able to work 30 years and get a pension for the rest of my life. And then the dudes that's working a pension, they fucking looking poor as hell, crashing out because inflation is crazy. Now we get into the point to where they basically saying, listen, if you just getting a degree, it ain't enough. A degree ain't enough. 
is not enough no more. You got to get a specific degree in a specific industry. Listen, when the Apple Vision Pro came out and you see robotics starting to perform surgeries, what won't be disrupted? What won't be programmed? They are using robots to assist them on the surgery table. They're implanting chips in the people's heads with Neuralink. They're racing to your demise. Amazon is replacing workers in a warehouse. You're not even fucking a worker in a warehouse no more. They don't even need you as a high-low driver. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, listen, we have to rethink what success looks like long term. We have to rethink what success looks like long term. If you are not having a healthy level of fear in order to do the thing that is going to be in your best interest, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Disruption has happened everywhere. You can't even go and go to a mom and pop grocery store or a regular grocery store anymore. They used to have delis. Everybody had a business because everybody was using it in order to serve the community. Now you got Amazon and Walmart and Whole Foods. And they kicked out and they destroyed the entire fabric of the community in order to build big box stores. And then the big box stores got disrupted by other big box stores. And then the big box stores and the other big box stores have started to get it disrupted by e-commerce. And now everybody's losing their jobs based off of technology. Man, I'm getting every single dollar that I can and I invest every single piece of that dollar into what my future is in order to make sure that my daughter is going to be okay for the rest of her life. I'm just telling you. 